Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about arithmetic sequences. I call them arithmetic sequences, whatever. Um, so an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic sequence or whatever you want to call it is just a sequence that increases by the same number every single time or decreases. It's an add-subtract relationship. So the difference between consecutive terms is the same. So for 8, 12, and 16 is a perfectly acceptable arithmetic sequence because it changes by 4 every time. Now, the common number that they have, of course, is referred to as the common difference. The common difference can be negative. And the variable that they use for common difference is the letter D. Uh, the first term in sequence, when I do uh, an explicit or recursive formula for this, which if you haven't seen the mathematical patterns video, you should probably go back because I'm going to talk about those in just about three seconds. Um, so the initial term we call A. So in this case, A would be 4. Now, my recursive definition is very simple. And a recursive definition, of course, is a definition based on the term uh, before it. So I would take the common difference. So A sub N here would be the common difference plus the term before. So if I want to know what a sub 5 is, I need to know a sub 4 and then just add the common difference. They often put the a sub n minus 1 thing in front, but it really, I mean, it's kind of reflexive as long as you're adding them. Um, on the other side, there's an explicit formula. And this is actually kind of helpful to know because it makes it way easier to find information if you know what the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence happens to be. And it, the idea of it being explicit is you have to have a starting point. So your first point does have to occur. So a sub n does have the first term in it. From here, I need to know how many times I'm going to go up the common difference. So in this case, I go up common difference uh, one time. If I go up the common difference twice, so 4 and then 4, it gets me to 12. So really, I'm basing my idea off the common difference times whatever your term is minus 1, because it's 1 less than your term. So here's the fourth term in sequence. So 1 less than that would be 3. And if I did 3 times 4, it would give me 12. Add 4 to that, and it gets me to the 16. So the explicit formula is just the initial term plus the difference times uh, the number of terms minus 1. That's the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. From here, they might ask you questions like, and I'm just guessing, um, is it arithmetic or not? And so you're just going to look to see if there's a common difference. For some reason, I rewrote the one I'd already used. I think initially when I thought of it, I wasn't going to do it. But this has a common difference, so the answer is, yep. This one not so much. There's not a common difference. So we can say, no, it's not a, an arithmetic sequence, which is important to know. Let's look at how we can analyze arithmetic sequences. So we may need to find specific terms. So I need to find the 50th term of one that starts at 8 and goes to 3, and then negative 2, negative 7, and negative 12. The benefit for me is I can use the explicit formula here, which makes my life much, much easier. So I'm going to write the explicit formula up, a plus uh, d times n minus 1. So that's the explicit formula. And from here, I can uh, get the information that I need by finding the common difference. So I'm going down 5. I'm going down 5. I'm going down 5. I'm going down 5. So if I need to find the 50th term, I take the common difference, which is negative uh, 5. The term in front of, uh, so it's 50 minus 1. I was going to skip that step, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it starts out at 8, because I have to have a starting point. So 8 minus 5 times 49. And 5 times 49, shockingly, I didn't know off the top of my head. So 245. And 8 minus 245 is negative 2. 237. So the 50th term in sequence is negative 237. What else might occur in 
the realm of possibilities in terms of missing uh, the type of questions with arithmetic sequences is to find missing terms. The nice thing about arithmetic sequences is it's easy to tell um, that the common they have a common difference, so it's easy to break up the difference between terms into equal parts. So the first thing I need to do is look at how many equal parts I need to break it into. It takes one, two, three to get from one to the other. The other. So I'm going to do 63 minus 120. When I do 63 minus 120, I end up with negative 57. And I'm going to break that into three parts. So when I do that, I get negative 19. That's my common difference. To find my missing terms, I just take uh, my initial term and add the common difference. So 120 plus negative 19, or minus 19. So this term would be 101. If I go down 19 again, I end up with 82. And if I go down 19 again, it should give me 63, and it does. So those are my missing terms. So if you can use that information, kind of helpful. Next section uh, is uh, the arithmetic mean, which you've done the arithmetic mean forever. You probably just didn't know that it was called that. The arithmetic mean in this case would be uh, the average of two numbers. So you take um, x plus y and divide by 2 the same thing you've done uh, in forever and, and on. So if I had, for instance, uh, if I needed to know what the missing term was, it's kind of related to what we already did. Um, if it was uh, 25 something, 75, to take it I would just take 25 plus 75 and divide it into two parts. So of course my arithmetic mean, or my middle term here, would just be 50. It's pretty simple stuff. I mean, it's not like it's uh, really complicated. You've been doing it forever. Just add the two numbers together and divide by 2. Um, on the other side of it, the reason we br I brought that up is because when you do geometric sequences, there's a geometric mean, which is something totally different. So if it, the mean you probably know is arithmetic. The geometric is the new one. So they may want to know what the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence happens to be. And the reason that you would need to, that you would use it is so you could find a term that's missing. So I want to find the 15th term of this sequence. So in order to do that, I need to remember what the explicit formula is. And of course, it would be the first term plus a common difference times the number of terms minus 1. So if I can find a common difference, I'm moving in the right direction. These are going up by 4 every time. So I want the 15th term. I have the um, common difference figured out, so that number is going to go right here. The number of my term is 15. Uh, my first term is 21, so I do 15 minus 1, add those together. Uh, when I get that to happen, I do 15 minus 1 is, of course, 14. So I guess I could write that term out just so you can see it. I don't know why I bothered, because you knew that anyway. Uh, 56 plus 21. So I can say with relative confidence that the 15th term in this sequence would be 77. And if you'd like to continue on out from 33 and keep adding 4s to it, you could probably get to 77. But, you know, good luck because it's about, you know, 11 more terms to get there. So I think that that is it, and it is. So um, that should cover everything for arithmetic or arithmetic sequences, and uh, should get you on a fresh start to a new day.